Welcome to another episode of the Meal Prep Monday podcast. I'm your host and founder of Prep Dish, Allison Schaff. Today, I'm excited for another interview, this time with dietitian Laura Ligos of The Sassy Dietitian. Our interview is really interesting. So I love her perspective. She looks at nutrition through a variety of lenses, but really gets away from looking at weight as the way, metric for health and looks at some other things, um, specifically energy, which I'm really excited to talk about. I feel like for me personally, that's something you know, I'm always looking for, you know, how to have more energy. I think that comes um, partially with motherhood, um, but just really interested for you guys to hear, like I said, her perspective on things. We also talk about um, protein, interestingly, if you listened to last week's episode, you know, that was a topic that came up as well. Um, and a little bit more about breakfast was um, a topic that came up. So excited for today's interview. Before we get into it, a reminder, two things. One, if you are listening to this podcast, know that we are now doing these in video format. So if you want to see me and Laura, you can head to YouTube and watch the interview there. And second, if you would like to try out the prep dish meal plans, this is a perfect time to try out our free trial because for the month of January, you will have access not only to our gluten-free, paleo, low-carb, super fast, like all of the meal plans we always offer, but for the month of January, we have special super fast protein boost menus. <laughs> and what this means is they are meal plans that are quick, easy, delicious, but they also are gonna make sure that you get 30 grams of protein, not only at dinner, but also at breakfast. And after doing these interviews, I realized that was something that people were needing help with. It, it can be hard, um, I think, especially at breakfast to figure out how to fit in those 30 grams of protein. Um, so if you would like to try out those protein boost menus, you can head to prepdish.com slash MPM. You'll get access to all of our meal plans for two weeks for free. See if it's a fit for you. So I encourage you to do that. And now on to our episode with Laura. Hi, everybody. I am here with Laura Ligos, the sassy dietitian. I'm really excited for our conversation today and to bring her on. Laura, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. So um, I'm Laura. Most people call me sassy. Um, I've tried to rebrand a little bit because I feel like as a mom, I've become less sassy and more gentle and soft in my approach. Um, but I've been a re registered dietitian for over 10 years now. I have my own private practice helping mostly women um, improve their relationship with food and optimize their overall health. Um, and then I also live on social media too and try to educate and debunk all the crazy myths that are out there. I thought that we had seen it all 10 years ago. And I feel like with the rise in social media, it's like, I feel like I'm just batting flies every day. <laughs> so. Yeah, I try and just block out the noise, but I know it's out there. <laughs> oh, it's definitely out there. And I'm a, I have a two and a half year old. Um, and I am pregnant with my second due in February. So super busy over here. Um, and I feel like becoming a mom, like I said, has really changed my approach to nutrition and also with my clients too, because most of my clients are either trying to conceive pregnant or in the postpartum period, whether it's postpartum by a couple months or 10, 20 years. So, um, most of my clients are moms as well. Great. Well, yeah, I think you'll be able to relate to a lot of our audience here and, um, I just real quick, I remember we partnered back. I was, I didn't look up how long ago it was, but I think like it was back when we were both getting started yes. so, several years ago. Yeah. I had a podcast back then. I think that's how we probably connected. Okay. Was it, I wasn't sure. Cause I think we also maybe did something on your blog. I'm not sure, but we've, so we've done some partnerships in the past and we're back. <laughs> so <laughs> We're still, we're still kicking, which is yep. a good sign. Yep. Still doing it. Um, great. Well, when I asked about some, you know, topics, one of the things you threw out there was going over metrics for health beyond weight. And I thought that's such a, I think that's so interesting to look at and something that my listeners would like to hear more about. So what metrics are you using um, other than weight these days? So something I like to start with is I think a lot of people think that weight loss should be the goal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mostly because we've always been taught that weight is the metric of health. 
Um, you know, you go to your doctor and the first thing that they do is weigh you. Um, and if you look at like biometric screenings or life insurance screenings or whatever it might be, it's always weight-based. Um, and so I understand why a lot of people think that weight or weight loss should be the goal. Um, but what I tell most of my clients and my followers is that weight is just the outcome. Your goal should be health. Mm -hmm. um, because we really, we don't have as much control over weight as we think we do. Um, and sometimes the weight that we think that we quote unquote should be is not actually where we're our healthiest. I work with a lot of women who come from a disordered eating background, and most of them will tell you that at their leanest, they were not their healthiest. Um, they might have looked the part and you might have seen pictures of them and thought, wow, I wish I looked like that. Um, mm -hmm. But inside, maybe they were missing their period. Maybe they were struggling with fertility. Maybe they were dealing with mental health issues like depression and anxiety. Um, and so that's really where I, you know, I, over the years, I've never been like a quote unquote weight loss dietitian, but I've really tried to steer people away from making weight the only metric that we're focusing on. Um, and so, as I often say, is weight is one metric of health. It's not the metric of health. And mm -hmm. so it's not to say we ignore it and say that it doesn't matter because certainly it can impact people's health. It can impact their joints and their fertility and so many different other mm -hmm. things. Um, also the sun is shining so <laughs> right in my room right now. <laughs> Um, I haven't figured out how to, to block that out. So sorry. I'm it's okay. Um, and so, uh, I, I, I like to expand it and, and I will say that we are human. So we always often come back to that need or that want to lose weight because we feel like that's what we're supposed to do. And so even my clients who know that we're not here for weight loss still come back to it. So I never say this in a way to like shame or guilt people and mm -hmm. thinking, oh, well, I guess I need to stop look, like listening or thinking about weight. No, that can be a small part of your puzzle, but it shouldn't be the only piece in that puzzle. And so what are other metrics? Mm -hmm. um, the biggest for most of my clients is energy, um, especially because as moms or as women, we're, we you know, run around and burn ourselves out so easily. Um, and a lot of women will tell me like, I can't get through my day without feeling like I need a nap or an extra coffee or, you know, by two o'clock, I'm just so run down. Um, and then, you know, I get to bedtime and I'm wired. Um, and so energy, sustained energy throughout the day is a huge one. Um, in, improved like cognitive function, not having brain fog, being able to think clearly, maybe being able to just like form sentences, right? Like I feel like the mom brain gets such um, such media coverage. And I'm like, well, why? Why does that happen, right? Like why do we allow that to become a thing? And it's because we're overwhelmed. We're normally undernourished. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sleeping well. We're not managing our stress. Um, and so we continue, if you that now look at all that. How's your sleep? How's your stress? We can look at all these different things. And some people call them um, non-scale victories. I just call them metrics of health. Um, mm -hmm. And so sleep, stress, energy levels, um, brain clarity, you could even look at performance and performance can mean different things. You know, it's not running a marathon, but like, can you actually work out? Do you have the energy to go work out? How do you feel after working out? Do you feel like completely dead? Or do you actually feel like energized as you should post-workout? Um, you know, how are your symptoms? Symptoms can range from obviously like we talked about brain fog, but headaches, um, fatigue, gut issues. So bloating, um, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation, um, and there's skin issues. Like I could list a million symptoms, but like being minimum, having a mostly symptom-free life is for most people way more enjoyable than hitting a certain number on the scale. Cause usually those symptoms are stopping them from living their life. Whereas their weight. And I, I don't want to speak for everyone because sometimes weight is hindering to life, but for most people that last five to 10 pounds that we can get so hung up on is not hindering your life quality. If anything, it might be sustaining it. It might be sustaining your menstrual cycle. That's another non, uh, non weight metric. You know, if you're someone of reproductive years and you're not on birth control, we should be able to see a, a relatively normal, uh, menstrual cycle with relatively minimal symptoms. Um, so I could go on and on, but that's probably <laughs> a good place to so that's, start. Yeah, that's really helpful. So looking at a lot of these non-weight metrics, I mean, I get excited about all of these because, you know, especially, you know, I think before motherhood, but once you're into motherhood, things like energy, like that is the key, right? Like you want to be able to go through your day and keep up with your kids and enjoy your time with your kids and kind of have that life full of energy. So when you're looking at tying that back into nutrition, what are things that people can do that can help increase energy or any of the other so, metrics? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, 
so it definitely depends, which I get all my clients are like, I know you're going to say this, but it really does (laughs) depend because I'd have to know more about the individual. But some of the things that I see is poor sleep hygiene. So Mm -hmm. especially being moms, we have what we call like revenge bedtime. So, you know, we put our kids down to sleep and then we want those one to two hours after they go to sleep to ourselves. And I'm guilty of it too. I'm not like, you know, perfect either. I want that time on the couch where I'm not thinking about anyone else but myself. Um, But if we're now scrolling on our phone really late at night, we're watching the news, which can be super depressing and anxiety provoking. Um, And then we're delaying bedtime only then to wake up, you know, six or under seven hours later. Um, And then we, we already start our day off tired Mm -hmm. and not replenished. And so that can be like step one for some people of like, not even looking at the food, but just saying like, how is my sleep hygiene? Am I getting seven to nine hours of sleep if I'm able, right? Obviously if you're nursing a baby or you have a newborn, it's understandable that you're not getting seven to nine consecutive hours. But Mm -hmm. for most women who are out of that season of life, it is possible. It's just a matter of doing some reverse engineering and getting yourself to bed sooner. Um, Then you can kind of look at when you wake up. Um, And some people literally go right to their pot of coffee and they suck down their coffee thinking that the caffeine is going to give them the energy they need. And certainly it gives them that like false sense of energy in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, But oftentimes drinking too much coffee replaces the food that you actually need, the energy that your body requires. And so most people will feel a crash later on in the day. Um, And so I actually say, it's not that you can't have your coffee, but start your day with food, start your day with a nourishing meal, because your body needs that, those nutrients to be able to provide that energy for you. And when we put coffee in our system without anything else, it can actually increase our cortisol, which is our stress hormone higher. And it can also lead to um, some blood sugar mismanagement. So eating first thing in the morning is really important. Then having your coffee, it's not once again, I don't take things away from you. I'm not trying to make you miserable. Um, but most people find that they don't actually need as much coffee because they actually have energy in their system. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of that continues that pattern the rest of the day. Are you eating every three to five hours, depending on the person? Um, and are you actually eating solid meals at breakfast and lunch? So many people just wait till dinner to eat real meals. And most of your energy is taken up from the second you wake up to the second you sit on the couch at night. And so waiting to eat a large dinner at night is not, it's actually counterintuitive because now mm-hmm you have no energy for the day and you're kind of just letting the the food sit there overnight. So um, once again, I'm not perfect here either. Days happen, kids happen, right? But Mm -hmm. overall, if we can kind of spread out our food and not be scared to eat earlier on in the day, oftentimes I see more energy um, throughout the day. Well, that just proves your point of like, hey, if you're focusing more on the energy versus weight loss, that is like, it is almost like, wow, that makes more sense that you would want to start the day with really getting some good, you know, meals. in, so that way you do have that energy to sustain you throughout the day. You're not needing to fill up and have a bunch of energy to sleep. It's kind of like the opposite. So that makes a lot. And kind of to your point there is that if we go back to weight as the outcome, not the goal, Mm -hmm. if I'm only focusing on weight, a lot of times what I see happen is people restrict, they, they call themselves quote unquote good all day long. So they eat a tiny breakfast or they skip it. They eat a tiny lunch or they eat just a salad. And then they might have a snack or two during the day. And then they get home and they tell me that they're quote unquote bad. And I use this good and bad because I don't believe that there's any moral value around food, but I'm just using the words that I hear people say. And then they end up binging or over consuming food later in the evening because they're hungry. And Mm -hmm. we've been taught that this is bad. No, that's just actual hunger. And most people are scared to eat earlier on because they think, oh, well, my pattern's going to continue. I'm going to eat a big breakfast, eat a big lunch, eat snacks. And I'm also going to go home and I'm going to, you know, snow plow into the bag of chips Mm -hmm. when really you actually end up eating less at night. And the outcome is that your weight might change purely because you're focused on nourishing yourself and finding that health. Mm -hmm. And what I have found over the years is that having more energy or those type of goals, having a better menstrual cycle, having less symptoms is far more motivating than weight loss. Weight loss is so fleeting and it feels like it's going to be this big like prize. Um, but really it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And so going back to that breakfast, because, you know, with prep dish, we mainly offer most of our meal plans focus more on dinners that can also be used for lunch. And a few of them give breakfast options, but we don't have one that gives every day. Here's what to have. And so I do get a lot of questions. You know, what would be some examples of some good breakfast that can really if you're focusing on the energy that can really help with that? 
I always try to first start with a protein source. So it might be eggs. It might be chicken sausage. It might be, um, you know, protein powder in a smoothie. It could be protein powder or collagen powders in like an overnight oats, but always trying to lead with protein because that tends to be the hardest thing, right? I can find carbs. No problem. I can find a bag of chips. I can find bagels. I can find cookies, crackers, muffins. Like those are so readily available. Um, so instead I always just pro- like say, if you can find protein first and add color, that's probably probably going to get you most of the way there without overcomplicating it. Um, so if you're looking at protein plus color in eggs, you could make an omelet that has, you know, red peppers and spinach and onions in it. You could make a quiche or some um, egg muffins if you need something ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, you could even make like a breakfast burrito. A lot of my clients, because they are moms or they're newly postpartum, they want to have freezer meals available. So like making yep. breakfast burritos that you can freeze and just reheat. Um, you know, if you use chicken sausage, if you're not an egg person, you could use chicken sausage and maybe like a veggie hash, or you could even do fruit on the side and, you know, mm-hmm. some avocado toast, um, overnight oats are a really easy one for a lot of my clients. Cause they make them in, you know, less than five minutes the night before oats some protein powder, chia seeds, um, flavoring, whatever that might be, whether it's vanilla, maple syrup, um, berries, you name it, you can add whatever you want in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be super simple. So I'm always of the belief if you can make it simpler, it's going to be more sustainable. And because of my clientele too, you know, we don't have a lot of disposable time. It's yes. really like the, the, the quicker, the better, and you'll be more sustainable um, or, you know, it will be more sustainable. Yeah. And I think when going back to the planning of breakfast, you know, I, I do like to plan my week of meals, but when it comes to breakfast, I like that you mentioned like the overnight oats or, you know, something you can do the night before. I don't usually go through my week. I make sure I have breakfast items, but I'm not going through my week being like, okay, Monday, we're having this Tuesday, we're having this. But the night before I do try and think about, okay, when I wake up, what am I going to, you know, setting myself up. So when I wake up, it's already decided. So there is some pre-planning, but for that one, I'm not usually planning out too much in advance, but the night before I find really is helpful. So, well, I feel like those foods are also like more on hand, right? Like I'm more likely to have those foods on hand, like a carton of eggs or some oats. Um, whereas like for dinner, if I don't plan it, it's probably not going to be there. It's not going to be there. You're not going to, Oh, I just opened my fridge and have some, here's here's some chicken. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Us together. (laughs) And then, um, I mean, let's kind of continue on through the day. So when you're looking at like, are you a proponent of adding in snacks or just as long as the meals are big enough, does it depend on the person? What are the best ways to approach that? It really depends on the person. I don't think there, you know, I don't know how it was when you were in school, but I feel like there was like this whole push for small, frequent meals. Mm -hmm. And I think that works great for a lot of people. Like I'm in my second, almost third trimester right now. And it's the only way I can nourish myself. Like I have to be eating small, frequent meals. Otherwise, like I get overstuffed, I get reflux. So like it, it really is dependent and there's no right or wrong. You know, there's so many things out there that are catchy of like improve your metabolism by fasting or improve your metabolism by small, frequent meals. And everyone's like, what do I do? And I'm like, The thing is that it doesn't matter. It matters that you're eating the right food for you that makes the most sense. So I have some clients who like their work is so busy that if we were tried to try to introduce snacks, they would never be successful because they have so many meetings and, or their teachers or their nurses where it's like, they only get so many hours or minutes really to eat. And so I really look at your lifestyle, your digestion, and just kind of go from there. Most people prefer to do a breakfast, lunch, and dinner with one to two snacks per day, just from experience, but Mm. it's really whatever works for you. There's no like right or wrong. Um, So most of the time with my clients, we first focus on, we honestly first focus on breakfast because if you don't have enough energy to get through your day, then trying to make lunch or dinner, it just, you're exhausted. And of course Mm -hmm. it may feel so much more overwhelming. So then we focus on lunch and dinner and then we focus on snacks last. It's not to say you don't snack when we're not working on them, but Mm -hmm. oftentimes it's like do the best you can with your meals first, because those are going to be, excuse me, your primary source of energy and snacks are just kind of to bridge the gap. Now for someone who is like, you know, running a marathon or uh, training for a marathon or who is far more active snacks become Mm -hmm. even more important because you need more calories. And it's really hard to eat more than a certain number of calories at a meal, um, you know, and actually feel good. Right. Cause when Mm -hmm. we overconsume, we don't feel good either. So, um, I would say for those type of people who are training for something, a snack is almost imperative a couple of times a day. 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like in some ways it's similar to kids as does. Cause with my kids, I feel like if I focus on getting, you know, really solid, healthy meals in them and like less focus on the snacks, then, you know, they're going to eat more at their meals. And I found the same is true for myself. I mean, there are seasons, like you said, if I'm, you know, nursing or things like that, where yes, I have to like just eat constantly, but otherwise, as long as I'm focusing on at lunch, actually having a full meal and sitting down and like eating a meal that has, you know, all the protein, the carb, the fat, then it just kind of naturally pushes out those snacks without even doing it deliberately. So I think that's a good um, way to focus on things. And I like how I, I feel like you're kind of building on this of like, okay, we start with like sleep is the foundation and then breakfast. So it's almost like you're working through the day, um, building up to like all of these healthy habits. Is that, do you have like an, or is this like an order that you usually do things in or like, do you have like a building block system? Cause I feel like you're kind of creating this nice little building blocks. <laughs> yes. Uh, honestly. Yes. Um, what I tell most of my clients is when they come to me, um, pretend that I'm demolishing your house, um, mm -hmm. and we're rebuilding it from the ground up. And a lot of people want to start with the furnishing, right? They want to do macros. They want to do, um, calories. They want a certain, a specific diet. And I'm, I'm like, it's not to say that those things can't help. Mm -hmm. but it's literally like furnishing your house before you have the foundation. And we all know that storms come. And so what's going to happen to a couch that doesn't have a roof or a foundation below it or a roof above it, it's going to be completely destroyed. And so we oftentimes talk, I like to use analogies because I think it helps people understand where we're going. And so we're first building those foundations. So sleep, stress, um, eating frequency, eating enough, um, having a better relationship with food. So we often talk about how you're talking about food, right? The, mm -hmm. the good versus bad. Um, I hear it all the time. There's so much guilt and shame around food. So we're kind of like building upon that. And then we do, we add little bits at a time because people can only do it's, you don't live in a vacuum. You're not, most people don't have, you know, 20 hours a day to be focusing on this. You li literally have like a couple hours a week to think about these changes. And so, yes, we start, okay, let's get your sleep to a better place. Let's get your hydration to a better place. Let's get your breakfast in order. Then we focus on lunch or dinner, depending on the capacity that you have. Some people can do both because some people mm -hmm. will say, oh, well, you know, if they have a service like yours or they, you know, make a lot of leftovers at dinner, it's actually like kind of one and the same. Mm -hmm. And then we do snacks and then, you know, we talk about kind of nuances from there. Um, but yeah, it's usually like, we're just built rebuilding the house and we're making sure that all the things that would help you long-term are there. So the foundation, the walls, the roof, the doors, the windows, and then we can get fancy, you know, if we want to, some people don't, some people say these foundations are really all I need to feel better. And, you know, I also talk about capacity. Like if you don't have the capacity to furnish your house, just get a bed and it's, you know, it'll serve its purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you do, maybe when your kids are a little bit older or your work is, you feel a little more solid in your work or wherever you are in your stage of your life, we can always add more. Um, but we have to get that foundation. Otherwise, once a storm comes, it'll, it'll blow away, which is why a lot of diets don't work, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're all the, the fun furnishings. They're the fun throw pillows and the, the paintings on the wall. And the second that life gets hard, which it will, it does for all of us, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to stand because it's not, it's not, they're not sustainable. Mm -hmm. I really love this approach. I love how a lot of dietitians out there like you are taking this more holistic approach these days of like, hey, yes, we can talk about food, but we also have to touch on all of these other pieces, like it all plays together. Nothing lives in a vacuum. So that's so important to remember. Um, as we're coming up here on time, what kind of final words of wisdom do you have for our listeners when it when it comes to all of this and looking at metrics and kind of <laughs> being the best version of themselves? I would really come back to weight as an outcome, not as a goal. And thinking about what would you like, what would you want your life to be like if you could never change your weight? And I know for a lot of people, they're like, well, no, I, I have to. Okay. But it's the outcome. It's not the goal. What would your goal be? If your goal would be to be able to keep up with your kids, well, let's do that. If your goal is to be able to not need a nap throughout the day, let's do that. If your goal is to not have headaches throughout the day, let's do that. And I promise you, these are all my clients. All mm -hmm. of them have come to me with headaches, fatigue, um, low energy. Um, and a lot of them also want to lose weight. And a lot of them end up losing weight, um, mm -hmm. not because they're trying to, but because it's an outcome of the habits that they're instilling. Um, and I think when we kind of take some of the pressure off of that, um, mm -hmm. it ends up being easier to, um, find sustainable habits that work for us. 
I love this. I love that you're shifting the perspective and the way we look at things. This is so wonderful. So I'm sure people are going to want to know how they can find you. Where can they find you? Do you offer any services that might help anyone or what? Where are you at? So you can find me at the sassy dietitian.com, two T's, no C in dietitian. <laughs> um, I feel like we always have to say that. I know. <laughs> and um, I'm on Instagram, sometimes on TikTok. Um, I have a website. All my services are on there. I'm currently on wait list for a bunch of them because I'm waiting for my second baby. Um, but I do have some smaller services like ask a dietitian or just functional lab testing. Um, if you're looking to get in with me and then start a one-on-one -on -one program next year. Um, but also I feel like I just give a lot of helpful, helpful information online too. So if you're just kind of, you know, hearing this for the first time and just want to explore, feel free to come on my Instagram page and I do a Q and a every Wednesday. So you have a chance to ask your questions for free. She does have a very entertaining Instagram page. So that's a good, good place to start. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your wisdom. Um, and yeah, thanks for com coming on. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Laura, for that wonderful interview. I had such a fun time listening to you, hearing more of your perspective and the lens at which you view nutrition and health. A uh, reminder that if you would like to try out the time-saving meal prep meal plans here at PrepDish, head to PrepDish.com slash MPM to try them out for two weeks for free. The month of January is an especially good time to take advantage of our free trial because we are offering some protein-rich meal plans. We have gone through the trouble of calculating protein grams, making sure that you can easily put together some uh, breakfast item for the week as well as four dinners all of them will guarantee that you can fit in those 30 grams of protein um, eating like really delicious meals i <laughs> played a big part in handcrafting these meal plans I had a lot of fun picking out the the meals i've actually been preparing them all at home and have really enjoyed having these meals ready to go and enjoying them with my family so again if you haven't tried them out it's just prepdish.com mpm linked in the show notes Thank you for joining me today. If you are a longtime listener of our podcast and have not left a rating and review, those are always appreciated. And if you're on YouTube, let us know what you think. We are just putting our episodes on YouTube for the first time here in 2024. In the past, this has always been a podcast of solo episodes. And for now, I'm not putting those on YouTube, but I am going to be posting the interviews. So I hope you are enjoying those. Thank you so much for being here and I will be back again next Monday with another episode.